Good morning everyone. Welcome to my video in my craft room. I'm Glenda Mollett, an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Here's all my contact information and my current host code and I'll have that sitting there during the video. So we're going to make this beautiful card using the Country Home stamp set today. I got this in a swap from Diane Inkster and it is a gatefold card, which is a bit of a fun fold. Um, just thinking that I forgot one to get one item for my video, but that's okay. We'll do it on the run. Okay, so we're going to use the Stamparatus today. And the Stamparatus is a stamp positioning tool by Stamping Up. And I've got mine all set up for the... We're going to do this part on the Stamparatus because the flowers and the milk jug, milk tin, whatever you call it, are two separate stamps. So using the Stamparatus means that you can line it up perfectly and then you can stamp more than one and have them exactly the same. So I'm just going to pop the card over here and then I'm going to check and make sure it's still in the frame. So let me move this over a tad. There we are. So you can keep an eye on that. So this is the Stamparatus. It comes with the Stamparatus itself. And it looks like that. And then I use um, one of our craft sheets just as a bit of a uh, shim in there. If you're using rubber our cling mount or the new cling stamps, the red rubber ones, you don't need this second mat because it they have um, cushion in them already, but we're going to use photopolymer today, so you need this because there is no cushioning on photopolymer stamps and this just makes up for the difference between the two. These are the plates and they go in here, but you c it comes with two of them and there's two hinges so you can be set up for a whole bunch of different stamps at the same time. So we're going to uh, okay so Stampin' All Up also makes a craft and carry tote for the Stamparatus and I thought I'd show it to you today this is the tote, and I'm just going to stand up so I can get an eye of what you guys can see. So inside the craft and carry tote is where your stamparatus will stay nice and clean. So on one side they have a Velcro shutting slot to put your stamparatus in. I did forget to tell you that the Stamparatus also comes with magnets. There's two of them and you can find them on the back of your Stamparatus when you order it. Just a caution, these are the strong earth magnets and if they get within six inch, inch of each other, they snap together with enough force that they can shatter. It can shatter your magnets. So I, when I get my, got my Stamparatus, I took one of the magnets out and they are nowhere near where I use my Stamparatus. Okay, so for the other side, it carries your your uh, plates and they're just slide in spots. You can put more than one because you can buy extra plates as well and you can buy extra foam. And then it just closes up and it also comes with outside pockets. And in this pocket is a uh, shoulder carrying uh, handle and then it just closes up like that it has two handles and you can take that with you wherever you go and you don't have to worry about your stamparatus getting hit or marked or broken or anything so they're not in the catalog at the moment because they came out in between two catalogs so this is the sheet and I'm going to post this in the files section of my um, blog so that you can find it. The Stamparatus you can buy alone in Canada for $39 or you can, sorry, the Craft and Carry Stamparatus bag alone for $39 or you can buy it with a Stamparatus for 106 
There's also grid paper, extra plates, foam mats, a pack of all of the different things, and then you can also buy extra magnets. If you're looking for the Stamparatus, it is on page 207 in our annual catalog. Okay, enough tools. I should go on my, my computer and make sure that I'm oriented properly before I carry on because sometimes it does weird things and I end up being sideways. Nope, doing good. Okay, so I don't monitor my um, computer while I'm watching, so thank you for joining me and I will answer any questions once I go offline. Okay. So let's get this going here. We're going to set up the Stamparatus. I have, this is a really small piece and I didn't want to have to do it right in the corner so I set myself up a little jig and it's just a scrap piece of paper. It doesn't matter um, what size you make it. You can always do one at the top too to move this down a little bit if you want because we're stamping really close to the edge. But I elected not to do that. I've just got one on the side. Okay, so I'm just going to put this here because I want to, I need to make sure which side I'm stamping. All right, so that's on the top and this one goes on the bottom. Okay, so let's get this out and we're going to get the piece that I need to stamp on. Now the beauty about the Stamparatus is if you stamp it and you end up with issues of it not stamping properly, you can just re-ink it again and stamp again. I do recommend having something underneath the top and the sides when you um, ink it up just as to support it a bit and mine is resting on a tool that I've got hiding up there that you can't see. So ink it up. And it doesn't matter if you get um, ink on the plate because with a Stamparatus it doesn't transfer onto your paper. So you ink it up and just flip it down like a sandwich and then push just like you do on a regular acrylic block. And then you slowly, these are photopolymer, they have a tendency to stick. So see I haven't got good pressure on that side. So now I'm just going to go down again and push. It all has to do with where the magnet is. Sometimes it interferes with your pressure. There we are. And see it's stamped in exactly the same spot. Now we're going to stamp the flowers on top. And I'm just going to move this down a bit so it won't interfere with the flowers. And I already preset this before I went online just to make sure it was going to line up properly. So now while I'm doing this, I'm just praying that it still works. You know, you got that, you're doing a demonstration and then the stamping doesn't work. Oh, it happens to me all the time. So very gently lift it up because photopolymer stamps are sticky. I forgot to push on that side. So back we go. Slowly lift it up. And there we are. It's in exactly the same spot. Now I, I really don't like the way it's stamped light down in that corner. So I'm just going to re-ink that. It's going to scooch this down a little bit. My paper still is in exactly the same spot. So when I go back on here... Slowly lift it up. There we go. That's better. So to avoid the issue with your magnet, you can make your cardstock piece bigger and then cut it down afterwards. You could even cut it with uh, one of our um, stitch rectangle dies. That would be cool. So let me see which one would fit. So these are our new stitch rectangle dies. And if you haven't got them yet, oh my goodness, you need them. Oops. Yeah, okay. Magnet. There, that one would work. Yeah, you could um, cut it out with one, two, three, four, the fifth one on the big ones. 
I store mine on magnetic sheets just so it um, they don't fall around inside the package and I leave them in the packages that they come with. Okay, get those out of the way. And I just have a piece of scrap paper here that I'm going to use for when I close my stamps. Now one caution when you're storing your Stamparatus, you can store it with one plate on it, but don't store it with two because if you, oops, you can see it doesn't close properly and you'll break the hinges. So for the second one, just pop it off and store it like that. And it'll be good to go. Oh, I'm sorry. I just realized there's a horrible glare going on. Oh, well. It's gone now. Now I'm just going to move this over a bit so that I can put that card a little bit better because I want you to be able to see the card. So this is the card again that we're making. Oh, look, I smudged it. Of course I did. And this is the inside. And this is the envelope. And I've colored it with blends and then used Winkostella on the yellow one. I don't know whether you can see the, the Winkostella, but you'll see it when I put it on. Okay. There's nothing I can do about that except restamp it. But I'll use this one because it's not smudged. This is the one I did as a template. Now, if you can see the edges, sometimes your cutter doesn't cut properly and you get those little flaggy things. Just take a sanding block or an emery board that you use your, on your nails and just go on the side like this and it takes all those flaggy things off. Okay, so we're going to color the tin first and we're us I'm using the light crumb cake and I opted not to do any shading on this but if you want to that would be cool. You just want to set down a, a layer of color all over it. And if you go in a circular motion, it tends to put the a better saturation into your paper. Of course, the little spots you can't do a circular motion, but the big areas you can. And you just go back and forth. And I, I would rather use the bullet end rather than the brush end because I find I have better control over where the ink goes and how much goes. But that's just a personal preference. You can do any any kind any end you like. And I think I'm going to quickly grab my dark crumb cake and do a little bit of shading for you today because I can. So one sec, I'll be right back. Dark crumb cake. There we are. So here's the dark crumb cake. And you can tell the difference on the, the end edges because of the bars at the top and the bottom. The thick bar is the brush end and the thin bar is the bullet end, which is the one I'm using. So when you're doing this, you kind of pay attention to where you think the shadows are going to be. So set which side you want the sun to be shining and I want mine to come this way. So there'll be there'll be a darker area on the side that this, the sun is not shining on. Now underneath this ridge there'll be a little bit because if you see it sticks out a bit and then I'm going to put a little bit right at the bottom as well. So that's the I did a coat of the light and then I highlighted with the dark and then I go back over with the light. And again, this is purely up to you which one you start with. If you like starting with the dark, start with the dark. My preference is to start with the light, add the dark, and then go back over with the light. It just gives it a little bit. It's easier for me to do the blending and see how it's blending nicely. Now you just have to go back and forth over it to get it to, to blend really nicely. And then you have to let it sit for a bit too because it takes a while for it to blend. Now I'm just gonna 
blend underneath here. There, so we'll just let that dry and see what it looks like when we're done. So that was the light and dark crumb cake. Now I'm going to do the um, mint macaron flowers. There's two of them. Okay, there's some of them. And you don't have to use exactly the same colors that I'm using. I tend to use the blends now for most of my coloring because I just like the way they color without lines. Oops. So that was light mint macaron. Now we'll add some light rich razzleberry to the big seed potty things. I love these seed pods. You see them in a lot of bouquets and they really add texture. And just going once again in a circular motion because I'm going to add a little bit of the dark razzleberry right in the center. And I kind of want it to blend in. So that's light rich razzleberry. Now I'm taking the, the dark and I'm just going to put some dots right in the center. Or you can do them all. The center of the centers. There we are. Now, by putting down a good base coat of the light rich raspberry, the um, the dark one will go in and blend a little bit more, and then you can just go over top of it again if you want, just to give it a little bit more blending. So that was the light and the dark rich raspberry. Now some granny apple green for the leaves, and this is the light granny apple green, and I'm going to do the leaves. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure it's a leaf of some sort. And we already did those two. Yeah, and that's a, I chose to believe that that's a leaf. Sometimes it's a little difficult to figure out what the drawn image is. So that's when you use creative license and just do whatever feels good to you. Now there's a stem there and there's a stem there. Okay, so that was light granny apple green. Now I'm going to take some dark daffodil delight and do all the puffs. And I believe these are cotton puffs from the cotton plants. Well, we were lucky enough to see them in real life. Now if you live down in the southern U United States, you probably have cotton growing near you, but in Canada we don't grow cotton that I'm aware of. It could be out there. I just am not aware of it, so it was kind of cool seeing the plants in real life when we went down. I don't remember what trip it was. Okay, so then I'm just going to do these little dotty things too. See, it doesn't take long to color this. It's actually quite fast. There we are. We're done. That was the dark daffodil delight. And see how the the tin is so you can see the light coming this way and it's all it's darker on this side so that's done so we'll put that to the side and I'm going to close oh before I do that let's let's stamp the inside in the envelope and then I can close that ink pad and get it out of my way so your card is oriented um, this way which is I call a hot dog card this is a hamburger card. I know, it's all food related. Let's put the picture on here. Now, can you see me? Oh, you can't see me doing it. Okay, so I'm just putting the picture down there in the corner. You can color this too if you want, but I'm not going to take the time to do that on camera because you already saw me coloring one. And the on, oops, the envelope. There we are. So that's the inside, the envelope, and the front done, and that's all the stamping we have. So I'm going to close that so it doesn't get all over my project. So the other pieces we need 
for this project. And I'll just get my recipe here so I can read the recipe to you. Piece of early espresso cardstock measuring eight and a half by five and a half. And I'll show you how to score and fold that in a sec. Two pieces of crushed curry at one and seven eighths by five and a quarter and they're embossed with the corrugated embossing folder which I'll show you in a minute. A piece of champagne foil to do the lattice work. A piece of um, adhesive sheet to go on to the foil. I have some linen thread. And that's it besides the corrugated embossing folder, which is this one. And look at it. Isn't that cool? So it's a six by six. So you can have your corrugations going this way, or you can have your corrugations going sideways if you like. And I've already done that offline. This is a um, dynamic one. So when you use it, you use your multipurpose platform with um, the top gone. And then this goes through with your cardstock in it. And then just one clear plate on the top of it. A country home stamp set. And the rose trellis dies. So this goes with the climbing roses stamp set. It has seven dies in it. So there it is. That's the entire um, die bundle. It's got a really cute sentiment here, but this card doesn't have a sentiment on it. So it can be anything you want. Okay, so here is the recipe and I'm hoping you could see it and I'll just hold it for a couple of seconds and then you can stop the video and write it down. It gives you the, the measurements and everything. So that goes back on the back of my card. Okay, now to do the early espresso piece so that you get it properly and don't end up with a gap in the middle, there's the eight and a half by five and a half piece and you want to score it at two and an eighth inch from this end. So let me get my paper cutter so I can show you that. Okay, so the Stamping Up Paper Trimmer has two blades. It has a cutting blade, which is the dark one, and the um, scoring blade, which is the light one. So you put your cardstock in here, line it up at two and an eighth, and then you'll score it. And you have to do it a couple of times to make it um, deep enough. Put that out of the way. Okay, so now we have this side done. So you fold it and burnish it. And then, without putting a score line on this side, you kind of, you have to kind of curve it a bit so that you bring it in and match it up and then take your bone folder and do that. That way you don't have that gap in the middle that you can sometimes get when you do scoring. Okay, so that's that tip of the day. The other tip I have for you is when you're using something that you want to, like an intricate die, and you don't want to have to do fiddly dot, 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 dot with the Tombow glue, put it, the multipurpose adhesive sheets on the back of whatever it is you're doing. So this is the multipurpose sheets, and they can be found in the adhesive section of the annual catalog. And all you do is pull the liner off the back. So I'm just getting my thumbnail in the corner there, and you pull off the one that has all of the printing on it. And all I do is peel back part of it, line it up on the edge. And I always cut it a little bit smaller than um, the paper that I'm putting it on and just do that and then there you go you got it on there and it's perfect almost every time yes it does screw up yes I have screwed up now the other really important in piece of information I have for you is don't cut with your die on that on the adhesive sheet because you will gum your die up and it takes a lot of goo gone to get rid of it yes I did it one day, not only once, but three times. Oh, and that reminds me. So yesterday was Wednesday in the real world. 
But in my world, it was Thursday. So that's why on Tuesday I posted, see you tomorrow on Thursday on my Facebook page so that you would know that I was coming up with my live. And then yesterday morning I was sitting and looking at Facebook and our son, our grandson's school posted, school's back in today, Wednesday, February the 13th. And I'm thinking, what? It's not Wednesday, it's Thursday today. Well, apparently I was wrong. And I had lived all of Tuesday with thinking it was Wednesday. So yesterday I had a bonus day because I got to live in 24 hours of my life over again. <laughs> yeah, it was club yesterday. It was a little confusing because my poor club ladies, they thought I was losing it. I think I was. It was very weird. All right, so you put your paper on your magnetic platform and I have the the um, foil side up, the adhesive side down. Then you put your die on there like that. And then your top plate. And then, holding it tight like a sandwich, flip it over. Because you want to cut these intricate dies with the die facing up. But you want to make sure that your cardstock is correct on the die. Now you can't do this with a stamped image one. This is only the ones that are really intricate and you don't have a stamped image to deal with. Oh yeah, I just hit it so I have to fix it again okay so going through the big shot twice once back and once forward and so here's the sandwich again and there we are revealing it so this just popped off it's the outside piece now it may not cut all of the plastic but that's okay because when the plastic comes off, so will um, some of the silver, sorry, sorry, champagne foil. So I have the Sizzix brush and matte set. And this just helps to poke out all those little pieces that hang around in there. And you just go back and forth. And if yours isn't doing this properly, it's probably because your brush is bent. It does happen with use, and all you have to do is just order another one. And the brushes come one brush and two, sorry, two foam mats because they, the, the foam wears out as well. So there we are. That got almost all the pieces out of it. Oh yeah, that one's there. So let's just have a look. Just picking off the, the stray ones that are hanging around. Put my die back out of the way. So now... You could save these little tiny pieces and use them as decoration on your cards if you want. I choose to get rid of mine because otherwise I would have so many little itty bitty teeny weeny pieces of cardstock in my craft room I wouldn't be able to move. Okay, so the one thing I did forget to get was my embossing bunny. Because... When we put this on to the card, it overhangs a little bit. So if you put a little bit of your embossing buddy on that after you get it on here, that it'll take the sticky out of that so it won't stick your card closed. Okay, next. I have already um, run these through the embossing folder. Just a sec, I have to take a drink of water because I'm going to cough. Oh, my apologies. Okay, so they're going to go on to the, the gatefold now. Because I don't want, and it's ambidextrous, doesn't matter, you can have your edges up or your edges down. I prefer for my edges down. And I don't want to use snail on this because I don't want to crush the corrugated things. So I'm just going to use a bit of Tombow and just go very lightly down a couple of the ribs. So that way it will stick. Oh yeah, so apparently I'm doing all the ribs. Not funny. And then I'm just going to dot right at the very end so that it will... Oops, missed that one. 
it will glue right to the very edge. I'm just going to let that sit for a bit so it goes clear. And if you do that, then it acts just like um, glue dots, little teeny tiny glue dots, and it doesn't push out. You know how when you use too much Tombow, it has a tendency to squish out and then you have glue everywhere? Well, this won't do that. And it just takes a second to, especially when you're using small amounts, it doesn't take too long at all for it to dry clear and then you can use it like glue dots. Okay, so just letting that dry. Put my Tombow away. And I think I forgot to bring my... I forgot to get my snail, but we'll use we'll use uh, fast fuse. We don't sell it anymore, but that's okay. And just put fast fuse on it. The only thing with fast fuse is once it's down, it's down, baby. It does not move. There you go. So that's all ready. And you see this? It's starting to go clear already. So while we're waiting, I'll find my inside piece and we'll put that in as well. Oops! Wrong adhesive. That's the repositionable stuff. That's not going to work because that means my card will definitely fall apart. And we'll just center that that in there and these are ready to go and I think I'm just going to open it so that I can see where the edges are it might be a little bit easier for you guys to see too for the first one there we are now for the second one I kind of want them to be in the same spot so I'm just going to keep it closed just so I can make sure that the the edges are equal. There we are. That didn't take too much. So now the next step is to put our lattice onto our card front and over as far as you can so there's a little teeny tiny bit hanging over. And because we put adhesive on that, all you have to do is remove the adhesive backing and there we are. It's all ready to use. How cool. Now make sure you're, because we've already put the inside in, make sure your, um, your uh, image is facing the right way. You don't want to put your inside this way and your front on this way. Yeah. Done that before. Hey, so now I'm just going to center this up and down and go over as far as I can with it. And just burnish it well onto your corrugated piece. There we are. Now let's take the embossing buddy. And this is filled with cornstarch, so it's nothing exciting, but it keeps them from being sticky and sticking to everything. All right. So now we're going to put the front on and it's if you can see down inside there I put it on with dimensionals but you're only putting the dimensionals on part of it because if you put dimensionals on the whole thing you won't be able to get your card open so what I do open that flap line oh sorry keep that flap closed line this up where you want it so that it's kind of centered one two three ribs just like that and then very gently pull that open, open this up. And all I'm going to do is, it went crooked, that's okay. Just put a little tick mark on each side so I know that I can't go past there with my, my dimensionals. So there's the two tick marks. And then I'm going to look at this. So I want the adhesive on this side. So I'm going to put that. So I know to put the dimensionals there. 
and I'm going to go inside the, and I'm not pushing them down yet because I want to do another dry run, make sure that I have them in the right spot. Sometimes if you don't push them down, then you can remove them. So I'm lining this up again with where I one, two, oops, one, two, three ribs in like that. And I'm going to be fine. None of my dimensionals are showing. So now I'll just push them down. Remove the backing. Don't you love these mini dimensionals? Oh my, my life has changed since stamping out brought out mini dimensionals. I used to cut all mine. And now I don't have to cut them because they already come small like that. Okay, so remember it was the third rib only over. Just kind of lying this, lining this up. And I'm not pushing yet. I'm just placing it on there so I can hold it up and make sure it's straight. Okay. Oops, that made it crooked. All right, that'll do. So there we are. Push that down, make sure it gets good adhesion. And there we are, there's the card. The only thing left to do is put the bow on. So to do the bow, I have this cute little bow maker. And I went to Hubby and I said, you need to get a piece of scrap wood of some sort. Draw me quarter inch holes, a quarter of an inch apart. And I bought some quarter inch dowel to put in the holes. So now I can make a bow from this size to that size if I wanted. So I don't, I hardly don't think I've ever made one that big. Number two is what I call it, which is two spots apart or in the second hole, because if you put it here, then it would be here, the second hole. So that's a number two. That's how I write it down in my instructions. Um, if you have anybody handy in your life, or yourself if you're handy like that, you can make one of these. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. So to do this, I'm using two pieces of twine or one piece that is 14 inches. So it gives you enough to tie your bow. And this is a, a double bow. So that's why I have two pieces and I had two cut pieces so that's why I'm not using a long one. So you just tie your bow. Now you can you can do your bow this way too. You can just take your rabbit ears and tie your bow like that and use that kind. I'll just do that. Well I'll do that now and then I'll show you how to do the bow maker. Okay so when you're making the um, the ears, the loops, smaller. Make sure you hang on to it like this because when you do use any kind of thread, whether it's the linen thread or the baker's twine, and you don't do that, the bow, the loops will twist and you'll have this really funky looking thing. So you can do, you can do a bow like that. Or you can do it on your bow maker. Now, do I still have the other? I had another couple of pieces of twine. Okay, so I'm going to just going to use this bow that I have, and then afterwards I'll show you how to how to use the bow maker. So me, while I was talking, see how it twisted like that. So you just got to make sure it's, it doesn't twist and pull it tight in the center. And this is the rabbit ear one that I did. And then I'm going to do a dry run on here to see if. It's the size I want, and I think it's a bit big. I want it a little bit smaller, so I'm just going to pull the the loops in a bit, make sure it's still tight. That's better. Now we need a glue dot, and the way I do this is I have my the back of my bow facing up, then I find my glue dot and on snapping up ones the glue dots are not on the flippy piece they're on the roll and I'm going to use my pokey tool oh which is very dirty and I'm just going to kind of roll it a bit because the twine is really thin so I'm just giving it a fine tuning with my fingers and rolling it and then when you put it on your bow 
it doesn't um, stick out past the edge of the bow and you can put it in the middle like I did that one you can put it on the side you can put it down here you can put it down there you could put it over there and there we are then I have my ribbon scissors and you can leave long tails or you can have the tails a little bit longer or short tails I mean and or a little bit longer like that so there we are the only thing I have left to do is put a little bit of Wink Estella because I like bling on my cards and I'm just going to put a little bit on here now the good thing about um, using the blends is you don't have to worry about reactivating the water-based ink the dye inks with the Wink Estella when you when you do with the uh, Stampin' Write markers that are dye-based ink, that means they're water-based and they tend to run a little bit when you reactivate them. But because this is uh, alcohol-based, they don't reactivate with a liquid, a water-based thing, which is what Winky is. There we are. So there's the card. And there's the envelope, and here's the original one. All right, so I'm going to show you how to tie a bow with the bow maker now. It's not hard. There is a tutorial on my blog. I'm not keeping my blog up at the moment, but the tutorial is there on how to tie a bow. So you just round, under, over, and I keep my Peter Pointer finger there, which points the direction that I have to put the tail in and you just play with it as you close it and there you go you get a perfect bow every time now if you would like to the next week place an order on my on online store at glendamollett.stampinup.net and then click on shop now using this host code or email me an order using this host code that's a minimum $60 order not only will you get a free celebration item from stamping up but I will send you this card kit in the mail the images won't be stamped but all of the die cutting and embossing and paper will be done for you and the paper will be there I'll even tie a bow for you so between today February the 14th and next week February the Wednesday February the 20th place a minimum $60 order on through my online store or email it to me and I'll put it in for you and using this host code you'll get the card kit for free as well as a celebration item from stamping up oh there's a there's a few comments and I appreciate everybody joining me today to make this card it's been a lot of fun and I'll be back next when next Thursday yes Thursday not Wednesday not Friday I'll be back to share another card with you and this one we're going to use the lovely lipstick foil it's beautiful and it's only available until the end of March and you can get it free from celebration with a $60 order and you can choose to order that when you place the order this week thanks ladies i appreciate you joining me this morning and i hope you have a lovely day thanks a lot bye for now